Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In my game, and a lot of other games, you have the ability to go inside houses and look around, loot in some cases. Think about games like Skyrim or Kingdom Come Deliverance. So in my houses, I have these chest of drawers here, that each individual drawer is separate, and I think it's a great way to add a looting mechanic to the game. We've done lootable chests before, and this is going to be very, very similar to it, but drawers are slightly different because there's multiple of them in a drawer set. So we'll have a look at compensating for that we may borrow some stuff from the chest of drawers from before but it'll be a good for us to do some basic animation where we can bring it out and i've got some sounds too so let's get started So I've been going through optimizing my houses on here and I have basically split them up into individual sections so we can hide them. So you like have a structure that's misc so it's got no collision. You have the walls, the doors, the stairs. It's all optimized so there's not millions of actors. So each individual one of these yellow things used to be a separate actor, it's now combined. A byproduct of that is I accidentally did the drawers as well so they're all like one model with everything else. But that's fine for now because what I've done is I've just dragged the drawers in and when I get some more time I'll go back through and I'll remove the drawers from there and make it set. But these are the drawers I've got from the Sinti Elven pack and it's basically a parent drawer set here with individual drawers. Now the unique thing about it is you can see the root of each of these drawers is at the bottom of it. They're not each individually there and you have to use drawer one, drawer two, drawer three because they have different root points to make it fit perfectly in which is fine. But what I'm thinking is we'll create a blueprint to house a drawer and then we'll put the drawer inside the drawer parent just so it's there. And when you interact with the drawer, we can animate it coming out a little bit, animate it coming out just like that, maybe even rotate it down just a little bit, you know, like if a drawer falls down or whatever. Play a sound, show the interaction, loot it, and when we've done with it, we'll put it back up and then rotate it back in. So that's what I'm thinking we'll do. So as I mentioned earlier, we have previously done something almost exactly like this. So in the bandit camp quest over here, we do have a lootable chest here where you can come up, you interact with it, and then you can take the goods from it, which is fine. And we're using the narrative in interaction to handle the interaction and narrative inventory to handle the inventory. However, where this slightly differs is this lootable chest here, all it does is when we interact with it is it rotates it and plays a sound. That's all it does. We need slightly more than that because we need it to move position and do some other bits as well. So the benefit of the way where we created this lootable chest is we do have a BPA lootable, a blueprint abstract file where it has a bunch of interfaces for what we do when we open it, close it and such like that. So we can just reuse this lootable one but for drawers instead so let's go around doing this so if you haven't got this bpa lootable all it is is an abstract blueprint with nothing in it it's abstract because in the class settings you can see it's marked abstract all that means is you can't drag it out so you must have a child of it that's all it means inside here we have the interactable loot which is one part of narrative interactable which basically just starts the looting option if you don't have a narrative interactive then all you need is some sort of interaction plugin that fires and you you can plug into it to do events like on interact or something like that. You will also need some sort of inventory. I do have a tutorial video on this which is a very basic inventory that you could equip to this. If not narrative inventory or another one like that are also good and that's it. So let's make some drawers. I'm going to click this BPA lootable. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose create child blueprint class. In here I'll call it lootable because it is a type of lootable underscore chest drawers because if I just put drawers it could mean anything. If I do chest drawers you specifically know it belongs to the chest and we'll open this up so let's zoom back over to our chest of drawers in here so we've got a static mesh which changes which is completely okay we can handle that we've also got a position that it needs to be pulled out to and maybe a rotation as well that we can set as well as it's rotating where it needs to pull out and only when the animation is done then the interaction needs to actually show and maybe the rotation at the same time so we can see it pop out we'll play the sound as well and then we can do loads of tweaks to it so the first thing i'm going to come and do on this lootable chest of drawers is I'm going to come and add the static mesh for the drawer. I'll click static mesh and I'll type. By default I'll assign it the top one like that and you'll see it is off position but that's completely okay because if we assign the second one it will be lower and then the third one will be lower as well. That's just the way the Sinti packs have gone. That's okay we'll cater for wherever your root is. So on this drawer I'm going to make sure that it's got collision of block all dynamic on it M mainly so you can't walk through it but secondly we need to make sure camera visibility trace is 
set to block. For the interaction I created and for the narrative interaction, that is the case for both. You need to make sure you've got some sort of trace available for it. What I will, however, undo is that it can affect navigation. We don't need it to affect navigation at all. The casing of it, that will handle the nav mesh. We don't need the drawers individually to do it as well. But now that we've done this, we need a way to tell this blueprint we've started interacting with it. For narrative interactable, it's super simple because we can just right click, add a vent and choose on interactive. However, if you've got my other interaction tutorial from the starting kit, you can add the interface interactable to this and then drag off of that when it's interactive. If you've got another type of interactable, you just need to make sure you have it on here. Now that we've done this, the first thing we're going to do is actually store the position and the rotation of the draw itself because that's what we're going to animate. We need to store this so when we're looping over it using the lerp function and the timeline, it knows where it's coming from so it can accurately predict where it needs to go to. So I'll drag the draw out and I will do get relative location and I'll promote this to a variable called temp location and I'll also do the exact same thing but for the temp rotation. So I'll do get relative rotation and I will also promote this to a variable like so. And we'll connect this over to there like so. So now we store both rotation and location. Now here's where we can actually look at playing the sound. So I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do play sound at location and we're using at location so if somebody opens a drawer at the other end of the map you won't hear it because we don't want the location we want to play it at we may as well just drag in the temp location i will just drag off and do get world location and we'll do of the draw why not so it'll get the location of the draw so specifically here it's not going to play it if you open it all the way over there now for the sounds i have a couple of sounds that i found in a pack i purchased so unfortunately i can't distribute it however the sound pack i did purchase is from infenzia from youtube he's got his own asset packs where you can buy loads of different sounds and stuff so the sound effects one i'm using is the universal sound effect 7000 sounds for 40 dollars, and you get all of the future updates with it as well it, it's a fantastic pack and i'll just add it to my bundle it's really good not sponsored that's just what i'm using so you see i've got a bunch of these here i've already highlighted all the closed ones right click and i created a single sound cue so now i can randomize between them and i've got a bunch of open and close sounds which is perfect so when we come into here when we're interacting with it we are opening it so i'm going to click the draw open and just attach it to here like so that'll now play the sound and now what we need to do is actually add the timeline to move it into position whether it's rotating positioning whatever you want to do so from here i'm going to drag down here and do add timeline and i'll call it draw open i'll double click into it i'll set the length of it how long do i want it to take let's do 0.5 why not and i'll add a track float track i'll right click at the beginning and do add key to curve right click at the end and add another key i'll highlight the first one and set the time to zero and the value to zero and the second one i will set the time to be 0.5 because that's what we've set it to and the value to be one there we go so now we've got half a second to go between zero and one so we can use this timeline to actually move the drawers exactly how we want so how do we look at moving the drawers so i'll drag the temp location in i'll drag off of this and i'll do a lerp vector just that one there the alert basically goes between zero and one using the alpha and we've already got the alpha we can connect to the new track here which is what we've just set it takes points and does the logic between two vectors so if you set the alpha to 0 0.5 it will take the temp location whatever location we put in here and work out what 0 0.5 between those two are and it does it all for you nice and easily and gives you the result the timeline will just loop over this and apply that result each time to give you the effect of it animating now so what do we need in value b i'm actually going to promote this to a variable because we will use this differently on each draw and i'm going to call this open location and i'll make sure it's instance editable like that and then what i'm going to do now i'm going to drag the draw in i'm going to drag the drop and i'm actually going to do set relative location and rotation there is a note to do both which is good so we can plug that into the update because the update runs on each time time the timeline runs and we'll connect the lerp into the location now we can do the exact same thing for the rotation so i'll drag the temp rotation in i will drag off and do lerp connect this up to here like so promote b to a variable called open rotation make sure it's ticked as instance editable and now put the alpha connected up to it like so i will tick shortest path sometimes if your curves get messed up it could do a 360 spin or something we don't want that just take the shortest route and now we'll hit compile and save
So now we actually need to look at and set the rotations of what we want the draw to actually do. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come and create another child blueprint of this chest draws one, but specifically for the type of draw I want. So if I right click and do create child blueprint class, I'm actually going to call it lootable chest draws. And then I'm going to get the name of the draw and I'm going to call it draw 01 because that's what draw it is and it will have numbers specific to that draw. I won't put any logic in it. It's just the numbers. And so if I come back and click this top draw, right click and choose replace selected actors with and you can see my lootable chest drawers is there so I can click it nothing has changed because that's absolutely perfect but we've now got the open location and rotation so if I pull this drawer out to where I want it to be out there rotate it where I want it as well yeah sometimes you pull drawers down just a little bit I'm, I might do half of that actually yeah there we go so now I can copy this location onto the location and this rotation onto the rotation set it all back to zero zero like so and that should be it in theory ladies and gentlemen so let's get try and see what we're like so far. If it works, then we'll create child blueprints for the other two drawers just with their specific numbers on. So we're now in the game. Let's ignore the patrolling guards. And you can see if we run up, you can see if I hover over it, it says lootable container. We haven't renamed it. That's fine. If I press E, it will successfully open it up. You heard the sound play and you saw the animation in the background play as well. It's not closing currently, but we can solve that. You can see if I now start the game and run up with the chest of drawers here, if I hover over it, you can see it says it's a lootable container if i open it up you see in the background the draw open and play the sound awesome but when we close it off it doesn't hide away again and that's what we need to do so this is actually relatively simple to do if you have an on end interaction on your interactive or something equivalent of you've stepped away from it you can do it you could also if you don't just add a sphere collision around this and on end overlap close the draw but for me what i'm actually going to do is just drag this across here and then from the interactor which is the player i'm going to get the narrative inventory component because we're looting and what I can do from here is I can actually assign an event to on end looting like so and this will tell us when we've finished the looting then we can close the drawers and do whatever we need but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come and copy the sound from up here on the drawer and paste it here so we play the closing sound effect so SC draw close and then I'm just going to connect this straight across to the reverse from end so if we're opening it it stores our position and rotation which will be zero zero for us then it comes in and it opens it to the new location. The closing simply goes to the end, simply says from wherever you are now, reverse back to what it was. So the alpha one will go to zero and it'll turn it from open rotation, temp rotation. And that should be it. If we just come in and let's add some items to it. So let's open back up our specific lootable drawers one here. We'll click narrative inventory. What items should we add to it? Let's just open it up and say, let's add, let's add some stolen goods. Why not? And click compile and save. One other thing I forgot that we need to do is we'll click the interactable and we'll just set the name of it so chest draws and we'll say loot yeah that'll be fine because we don't want it to say whatever it said before we want it to actually say open these chest of drawers so you know what it is so you can see now if i run up and hover over the drawers it will say chest drawers loot press e you'll see it open up we can see what's inside it okay good so let's take this there we go and now if we cross it off you'll see it closes back up how cool is that ladies and gentlemen adding to the immersion of the game even more so the last thing we need to do as i mentioned is we do have have multiple sets of drawers that we need to modify and so this is actually really really easy the way we've done it so what i'm going to do is make a copy of this chest drawer one and simply call it chest drawer two and i'll do the same drag off holding control and click copy here for chest drawers three but then i'll open number two and i'll open full blueprint editor i'll click the draw and i'll make sure it's set to the second drawer i need for mine compile and save and then i'll open up chest drawers three and i'll click it and i'll make sure it's set to number three as well just so they're all set correctly now that i've set it correctly if i click number two click on the second drawer right click replace selected actors with two and you'll see nothing will change because that's exactly what we want click number three click the third one right clicks replace three, just like so now you'll see we have the absolute ability to make these drawers open any single way we want them to so i'm going to take this open location here i'm going to go back to my lootable chest drawers here and i'm actually going to default this variable like so and i'll do the same for the rotation and click compile and save so now each of them will have defaults there and we can also come in and we can assign and random loot to them as well if we really want to so instead of stolen goods i'll put a blue flower in that one and then for the second one i just make sure it's got nothing in it that can be an empty one and now ladies and gentlemen if we try it we can successfully open all three drawers if we want however there is one bug remaining before we can successfully test the drawers properly if you open the bottom drawer which is all good and now if you open the top drawer you will see when i close it both drawers close again and the reason it's doing this is on our drawers here when we bind to 
on end looting, we need to unbind this event. Otherwise, it will remain there. Every single time you end looting, it will reopen itself. It's really easy to do, though. If we right click and do get player pawn, drag off and do get inventory from target, just like we did above. And then from here, we can unbind event on looting. And we can do unbind event from on looting, just like that. We can connect this up, connect it to this event to say this is the event we're unbinding, and then connect it back across to here. And that's it. That is officially our draw system set up and lootable, ladies and gentlemen. You can apply this same effect to coffins, drawers, wardrobes, chests, like we've already done, trunks of cars, wagons, bags, sacks, barrels, anything, anything you want. Now we can run up and you can see we now have three chests of drawers. So let's loot the middle one. You can see it opens. We've got the item. Close it. Let's try the top one. There we go. There is all of the chests successfully looting just like that. How cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? A proper lootable chest system. It really does add to the immersion. We've got anything else around here we could loot. You could probably loot a bookcase, maybe. Here, you've got an urn or something you could loot. You've got this little box up here. You could loot all of it. I think that's a book. That might be a book. You can't loot the book. You could probably loot the book. Yes, there we go. So how cool is that? Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. I don't know if you've seen, but I have actually been editing this world. So now we have this castle blocked off shop area. I'm still working on it, but it's got loads of shops that we could tinker with in the future. Put the lighting on. I've also added ultra dynamic sky now, so we have much better skies. I've been widening all the paths, so eventually we can have some wagons going across. And I've pretty much just explored everything. I've made a forest. We've got more paths going everywhere. A bridge across here, which goes off. And we now officially have a path to the kingdom as well. So there's a couple of paths. I think there's one around here as well. Yeah, it needs work, a lot more work, but you can successfully walk across the dedicated paths between the two towns. Thank you for watching. My name is Decryption, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.